Hey guys, welcome to 3 Mississippi. Sid. Mike. And today we're going to show you how we set up this Premier One electric solar fencing and we're going to see if it keeps the deer out. Let's do it. Maybe it'll just keep you in. Maybe if I put you inside of that, then you'll be contained. What if I put baby in the corner? No, you put baby in the corner. All right. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about why we're putting this 3D electric fence up around this, a portion of this deer plot right in front of us. A couple of reasons, uh, you know, before you guys start beating me up about, you know, just putting a whole bunch of money worth of fencing uh, on a deer plot, this is a test, guys. This is an important test because we're going to be- the emergency broadcast system. Yeah, but not that. Okay. It's an important test, but it's not that test. Okay. That is also an important test. <laughs> So we're gonna be using a lot of electric fencing here at Three Mississippi on this 45 acres over the next several years. Uh, we're gonna have, we're gonna be strip grazing or mob grazing, kind of regenerative farming of livestock. So we're gonna be moving electric fences constantly. We're gonna to have to keep deer out of our vegetable garden. Any of you guys that live in an area where there are deer and you're trying to grow a vegetable garden, you know how important that is. So we really wanna to get to know this electric fencing all of this stuff that's in the back of the truck right now that we got from Premier One Fencing is going to be reused on the actual farm in the spring, okay? But what I'm doing right now to test it out, one, to get to know this fencing, um, see, see what, what I need to adjust because I've never done this before, um, and two, to actually make sure that it's working and keeping the deer out, is I'm going to put it up around a Porsche. I'm going to make a giant exclusion cage in this deer plot. Okay. Now this particular deer plot, the reason I chose this one over the other one is because you kind of want to get this fencing, if you're trying to keep deer out, up and established before the deer are really hitting that area hard. Once they know what's there and they're hitting it hard, they'll try harder to get there. Now my other deer plot, I have a corn feeder out there. It's getting a lot of activity. This particular deer plot, I have a giant white oak back in the back that's dropping like huge massive. acorns, massive acorns. And that's what they're hammering right now. When those acorns are done and the deer start focusing on the plot, uh, it'll be taller. It's full of all kinds of stuff, brassicas and cereal rye and oat and wheat and peas. And so it's going to be the best food available here uh, in another month. And that'll be the time to find out if this Premier One fencing works. So let's talk about what a 3D fence is. A 3D fence, this concept is because deer have their eyes on the sides of their heads instead of in the front because they are a prey, not a predator. They struggle with depth perception a little bit more than you and I do. So when you give a fence depth, when you put multiple strands out and they're looking at it and trying to figure out where are they going to land, they get landing anxiety essentially is what happens. So they're less likely to jump the fence. They need a the deer fence. Xanax. That's right. They need a deer Xanax. Okay. <laughs> so this is my first time setting up electric fencing. This is my first dabble with 3D fencing. Uh, and uh, this is my first time using Premier One products. I've seen a lot of people using them. Uh, they're, they're, you know, a USA company and highly rated. So uh, they're not paying me anything to do this. This link in the uh, description below is not an affiliate link. I don't get anything if you click on it. But if you like what you see here, hey, this is probably what we're going to be using. And, and that's why we're testing it out. So let's put this fence together. Can we take bets, though, on how many times he's going to shock himself while we do this? I'm going to wait to hook up to energize it until the very end. I still feel like he's going to be tempted to touch it and test it out. You think so? I feel like you will. I might be tempted to, to connect no. it to you <laughs> and see how it works. No. Because you're a deer. Oh. <laughs> Let's put this fence together. Put your gloves on. All right, so I brought some uh, T posts. And we're going to use those for corner posts to kind of hold, be able to hold the tension of the, uh, of the lines. And then we got all these fiberglaze. 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 We got fiberglaze. 
Fiber glaze. We're going to use the fiber glaze rods. Fiber glaze, mm -hmm. yeah. So I got two different lengths of fiberglass rods, and that's what we're actually going to use. That's what she said. To hang our intelli rope, our electrified fence line on. So I guess the first thing to do is to set some fence posts. On the road, headed back to New Orleans Driving in the country, past old tiny scenes Big birds were singing in the tall willow trees Mighty fine Three words written on the paper bag I miss you Written in a message in black Thrown in a van Two thousand miles back A better time And how many souls And times that I've told The places that I'd want to be And how many days when I could have stayed Instead of just getting up to leave And given we make time I'll meet you down the line mm. A long coat Walking on a New York street A pack of crushed cigarettes that fell to her feet Well, ain't it odd how some people meet But that's the truth And two pictures buried in a guitar case Underneath the music sheets all over the place I caught a glimpse of the sweetest girl's face I ever knew And how many souls and times that I've told The places that had lacked to be And how many days when I could have stayed Instead of just getting up to leave And given we make time I'll meet you down the line Them, if they never seem to come or to go well, Find me in your memories That keep you from getting so low And given we make time I'll meet you down the line Down the line we'll Meet up down the line Down the line and Bless you <laughs> Thank you I got these springs that I can put on That'll put tension on the line I don't know if I'm going to need them I think I'm going to leave them out and potentially add them in later if I do. Tie that like that, okay. And then I'm gonna walk on down the line. Come on. Pretty cool connectors. They just screw open, slide right over the post like this. 
Got to put one down at the bottom, one at the top. In the warning of hell, but take heed where you ramble, or too soon you will go. One for the bottom. It's like Connect Four. Remember that game? Mm, sort of. It's like vertical checkers. And you know, if I do need the uh, tightening, if I thing. need the spring, I'll add it at the end and then just come back here and cinch it up. Just kidding. It's not hooked up yet. I'll tell you, so far, it's pretty easy. As far as fence building goes, I mean, I don't want to jinx myself. We're not done yet, but as far as fence building goes so far. Yeah, it's not bad. I like this. Yeah, we've made a lot of fences over the years and this one so far seems to be the easiest. I mean, this this could easily be a one person job. Um, no problem, but I figure. But instead we try to make Sid multitask and film and right. do it because even when I'm doing the thing, Mike was not filming. <laughs> <laughs> I was still filming it. <laughs> so it's like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yep. But for some reason they let you off the hook, but not me. Nobody's going to say, why wasn't Mike filming you while you were doing stuff? Nope, I still had to run my own camera. You just... Guess what? You also get to pick those. up all that stuff. I knew you were drop. just going to say that. Well, why do I... Not here. So I am not the default Frankie. <laughs> Apparently I am, because I'm the one bending over, picking it up right now. Here, use the two in my digits. So y'all are probably wondering right about now, why'd you even put the T-posts in there? Well, because if I start putting any tension on this, look how those are gonna bend. So I'm gonna tie everything back at the top to the T-posts that I put on both the inside and the outside. It's gonna be more efficient for the inside one, because the outside one, I'm going to have to actually pull a little sideways to tie it off. But it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Look at that. Ta-da! Today's episode of Three Mississippi is brought to you by the letter T. T. As in T-post. 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 I'd like a glass of tea. Cold tea. Nope. It's so warm today. It's actually not that warm, babe. It's, it's like 60 warm. or 65. But then you get like a chilly breeze through here once in a while. That's and it's off and on sunny. Like right now it's overcast breeze. again. But that's all right. We will survive. When do we make it buzzworthy? Like, you mean electrify it? Yeah, buzzworthy. When we're done? Yeah, but when is that going to be? Like, I don't, under, I don't know what the... Donkey. Donkey. The land of far, far away <laughs> means it's far, far away. You just called your wife a donkey. I don't know if that's acceptable, mister. Well, it was a reference to Shrek. I, I get that. But you managed to sneak in calling me a donkey. The joke doesn't veiled work. Veiled through a reference. The joke doesn't work unless you say donkey. It's like... It does too. I mean, you could say, that'll do. But if you say, that'll do, pig, that'll do, it's, now it's totally different. Okay. Hmm. Right? Right, I ran out of connectors. Uh-oh, now what? And line. So. And line? Yeah, I but guess But there's now, line right there. I know, but I gotta run it down there. But it's right there. I don't know. I don't understand. I gotta go get more connectors. And you gotta drive in more posts. You told me I was done. The outside posts. I don't understand. What do you mean outside, outside posts? Fence. Oh, well, that's very confusing. You didn't tell me that. I would have done it while I was standing there. You were there when I explained. What... Yes, you explained. You did not. No, you did like what men do. Instead of making the task more efficient, you made it take longer. You could have said double up a foot apart or whatever on each side of the, the rope line. And then I'd be done. You're a bad man. What are you doing? Building a fence. Building a fence. Out of paracord. 
So I think the whole idea here is that you got three strands. The inside uh, strand, I'm using five foot fiberglass posts with these cool slip-on, screw-on insulators. And we're putting one line about a foot from the bottom, and one line all the way at the top, okay? On the outside strand, we'll put one kind of in the middle. So when they're looking at it, they're all kind of confused. They're like, I don't know, what's the landing gonna be like? Let's not fly. This is how you get your reindeer to stay on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Santa invented this. Oh, there you go. For 364 days of the year. Yeah. I may come back and add another T-post to the outside. We'll see. What is that little tasty morsel of goodness in your hand? Well, this is supposed to connect one fence to another. I also didn't get a lesson from anybody at Premier One on how to do this. I just said, hey, this product looks cool. I'm gonna try it. So there is a possibility, I don't know, maybe a likelihood, that I'm not necessarily doing this. Way. Were there instructions for it or no? Probably. Okay. So each fence, each each line has a start and, a, and an end. So they're not connected at the end. All right, it starts, they all start down there, go all the way around and stop down there and they're, and they're not connected together in a continuous loop. So there's three different lines that all three need to be energized, right? And- uh, Like the bunny. Energize your bunny? No? I mean, probably should have brought a screwdriver with me. But, you know, that's what a bench made knife's for. For making benches? No? No. That's a wing nut. You ding that. Now, <laughs> this one here. I'm not gonna put on the same strand because you see how these are weighing it down? So I'm gonna come back here and put this one here so that I got support there. So I, so I have these two are now connected together. Now I need to connect this one to the loop. And uh, I'm gonna do that by connecting this. So those are the only ones that have to be connected. You don't have to do them at each interval? This, this one single line is conductive all the way. Okay, that's what I was asking. So. I don't know, I'm asking. I ask the questions. I'm investigative reporter, journalist, and I ask the questions. The question? Yeah, see, see, wee, oui, wee. Oui. What the heck is that? That's not a bird. Plane. It's Clark It's Kent. not a plane. Technically, it's UFO. I have no idea what that is. It's clipping along well, pretty good. Luckily, the United States Air Force and Navy and Space Force does not count on you to identify flying objects. That's accurate. But oh, if they did, think of the fun we'd have. Can you imagine? I see a pterodactyl <laughs> from the Paleozoic era flying across the sky. Oh, you dropped your nut. You can say, oh, nuts. <laughs> You're a lot. I'm a I'm lot. Just... <laughs> what do you mean I'm a lot? You're a lot. I don't think that's accurate. I don't recommend you use the tip of your knife as a screwdriver unless it's a <clears throat> unless it's a cheap knife and you don't care if you break it, but whatever. In the name of saving time, that's what I did. I wish this line 
line was slightly longer so that it wasn't pulling these in but whatever. tis what it is this is my first time doing this i'm not sure if i'm doing all of it right i watched several videos the concept is there let's take a look at the solar charger elon eat your heart out elon uh, ah. this is not one of his batteries anymore. i know i'm teasing perhaps i'll tweet about it later Okay, let's see what's going on in here. Um, this is their IntelliShock 60. It's a pretty cool unit. Uh, comes with a obviously a solar panel built on, and uh, it opens up like this. Those pull together. That pushes up. Pop it open. In here, we've got a little stand that slides onto the bottom of it and also acts as a grounding because you have to ground these um the battery oh it says it ships with the battery unhooked oh it is we're gonna go ahead and hook the battery up is this the part where you shock yourself what is that? Hmm. i'll stay back here i might have to put my glasses on blind squirrel trying to get a nut here Oops, oops don't touch that see i told you it was gonna happen <laughs> it's fine it's fine okay so the battery is now connected close that make sure it's not turned on 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 off control is off close that we're gonna take this and slide it into this cool groove it's groovy man it's way yeah, far out cool jazz groove all the way okay then where does it have to face to soak up the sunshine ideally south so i've got it in the middle here because we've got a tree line on both sides like right now we're already getting a little bit of afternoon shade but in the middle here with it facing south i'm going to get the most sun that I can get hit this location. Pop like that in there. Now uh, we got to take these, take these little nuts off or bolts. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. So once we get these out, then we put, we replace them with these. Okay. I don't know why it doesn't ship with that. Probably because of the size of the box that they're using to ship. Those things stick out and... It's a breakage hazard, perhaps. This is pretty cool. If you look right here, this has got multiple, uh, you know, degree settings that you can put it at. You know, the sun's farther south in the winter, so I think that's probably pretty good right there. I wouldn't want to point it straight up in our area. Okay, so what is this? Ah, this is a charger in case you need to charge the battery back at home those are directions we never need those it. okay so we've got two jumper cables alligator clips here uh one of them's orange one of them's black that's positive and negative respectively um, right right correct see i know stuff we're gonna take the black one and we're gonna connect it if we can to that grounding rod that we shoved in the ground down there okay and then we're going to come over here on this side of the device on this side of the device oh, sorry and let's see is there a hole there is so we're going to put this through that hole right there and then we're going to tighten this down on top of it push it through more a little bit more there you go now tighten. That's what she said. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay, so that should be good and grounded. All right. Now what happens if it rains? What, what happens if it rains? It's waterproof. Okay. What happens if it floods? Well, that's a different story. Then you grab the ark. Right. Now you're going on the other side, aren't you? Nope. Nope, just uh -huh. kidding. I'm going on this side too. 
they have neatly um i like this you know i should have came at this from the other side but i just now noticed this they got this extra indention here that actually makes this a little easier to hold in place uh, that was probably a customer complaint at some point and they fixed it. I like it. I like the uh, These terminals are quick and easy. I really hope this thing works really good because it sure is pretty easy to set up I mean it got good reviews So now what you can do is take this and clip it on that fence behind you. Okay. Go ahead. Is it gonna bolt me? Nope, it's not turned on. I don't trust you There you go. I Hear it buzzing. No, you don't Oh, that's a grasshopper. All right, so <laughs> everything's hooked up, okay? Let's read the directions before we turn it on. Oh, jeez. Because Frankie's not here to get it right. Yeah, Frankie would usually read these cover to cover. Wow, this is like full schematics. We don't need all that. We just need to not electrocute ourselves. How about that? What's the voltage? Like if I do touch it once it's on, what happens? Well, the voltage Am, isn't that high. Do I turn into barbecue or do the I just get like a, like a, like a this zap? This is uh, 60 probably. I don't know what 60 means. Um, 60 volts, 60 amps, 60 kilowatts, 60, I don't know. I'm just naming terms for electricity that I happen to know. It's got a 12 amp hour battery, 3,900 volt max at 500 ohms so 3900 volts at that 500 like ohms lot. that seems like a lot that which seems is excessive. apparently what they're considering animal contact so that means with no load it's sitting there at 11,500 volts and then as soon as you put the resistance of what they're calling animal contact putting it down to like 500 ohms yeah that's pretty slick so don't touch it but it's not live yet but it it's will not be. Live yet. But it's almost live. It's almost live. We're about to turn it on. No oh boy. I'm just gonna How are we gonna it. test it? Like if you hit it with a stick, will it zap? Or does it have to be like how a many sticks conduct electricity? Well, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out how we can test it without sacrificing an animal or you. They sent a tester <gasps> along with it. Really? That's so smart. That's because they want they know people want to see the zappy zappy part. Mm -hmm. Yep. So what'd they send? Like a gerbil? No? <laughs> <laughs> Look, can I can I read these without a? I mean, your jokes make me laugh to the point that I sometimes choke and almost die, and I kind of need to read the important part of this with no jokes. Yes, okay, sir. ready? Count to a hundred, no jokes. Ready? I can't go. Do that. First of all, I can't count to a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Next step is turn the energizer on. When switching on, make sure the power and control button is pressed in all the way. Check the voltage to ensure the fence is properly electrified. Before introducing animals, we're looking for 3,000 volts at the end of the fence. Okay, we got a green Wait, blinky a light. blinky light, but is it charged up? Like, how do we know it's happy? Yeah. It's got a green light, and you hear that click? Yeah. That's every time it clicks. It's cycling. It's sending voltage down the fence line. So where's the tester thing? It's in the truck. What does it say? Digital tester, 5.6. Oh, it's the same as this, 5.6, so uh, we're going to say that's good. So now what we're going to do is turn it off, okay, verify it's off. Nothing. Nothing. Double verify it's off. Okay, now, check this out. This is the other cool thing that they sent. The idea here is we want to get the deer... And I'm not going to do it next to this because I don't want them to come over and, and get electrocuted and get spooked and then run and pull that off. Right. Put a couple of these things on. Now this looks like, looks like the idea is just hangs on the fence like this. And then you put the apple juice. You put a little apple scent in it. I want to smell it. Smells like apple handlers. The idea here, a little bit of that apple scent in there, in the cotton, and the deer are gonna come walking up, they're gonna smell that apple, and they're gonna 
reach their nose up there to sniff it, and they're gonna get zapped as quickly as possible. And that's what's gonna teach them that this fence is a no-go zone. All right, so let's put some more of these on. <laughs> I couldn't warn you fast enough. I'm <laughs> gonna check it again, make sure it's back on okay. So he's got his little bottle caps on there now with the apple scent to get the deer to understand this is a no go zone, so they'll leave it alone. Yep. And it's working. We got voltage on the fence. Yeah, careful. You're making me nervous. You're making me nervous. So there it is guys that was us setting up this 3d fence from premier one fencing and uh, i really hope this fence does what we're trying to do i'm looking forward to finding out the setup was great uh, this is the easiest fence i've ever put up and uh, i like that everything's reusable it's kind of temporary we can move it from one place to another place we can put in more t-posts if it's a more permanent install like around the garden uh, so I'm really looking forward to seeing if this thing can keep the deer out of my cereal rye and brassicas as a section, as a, you know, kind of a big exclusion cage in the food plot here. And that'll really tell me, you know, what we're going to do on the main farm around the garden and around the animals come the spring. So this was fun. This was a good setup. It was a good learning experience for me and, uh, and for Sid. And I think we're ready to rock. So... You know, when it's when it, when it was about a week from when I'm going to hunt this spot, uh, I'll come and pull this down and there should be a big old giant salad bar there for the deer. And, you know, then we put deer meat on the table. So thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Check back because we're going to give you updates on, on how this is working. Thanks for stopping by. See you on the next one.